Guys, how are we doing today? My name is Courtney with Good Works Tractors. Today we're going to be doing some land leveling with the land plane. First time ever using it, I got to say it was tough sledding, okay? You know, so this is a piece of property, an area of the property that I swear is wet all the time. And it could be dead, uh, dead middle of summer, it could be the fall, spring, winter, whatever it is. Very rarely have I ever seen this area of land dried out. And um, I knew it was going to be a tough go at it. And, you know, for the first time using a land leveler, I've used a box blade a lot. So I, I have experience with grading and that kind of thing. But, you know, the land leveler actually, it took a lot of passes, okay? And, and it was challenging. And, you know, there is, well, let me, let me back up here, okay? Because my hunting lease here is on a, um, essentially a gravel pit, okay? That's why this property was purchased. It was uh, at one point going to be turned into a gravel pit and those, uh, dreams, whatever it was, just never came to fruition. So it's being farmed out. You know, we lease it for hunting rights and that kind of thing. But uh, the entrance to get in on one of these areas here is just full of potholes and it's just really, really a mess. And uh, to be honest, what we need to do is bring in some base, bring in some, uh, some top stone and, and that kind of thing and just really do it right. Um, but this is a good first step here. And, you know, you can actually see if you, if you look close throughout this video, I mean, you have huge boulders, first of all, wall huge, you know, I mean, there's some that are 12, 14 inches across, and then you have a lot of them that are four or five, six inches across, and then you have a ton of gravel, you know, I mean, that's, you know, your, your one to two inch type of gravel that's just buried down in that mud. And so what I kind of found as we were going through this whole process here was that um, those first 10, 15 passes, I might've done 25, 30 passes, guys, on this whole thing going back and forth, you know, with the scarifiers, you know, with those teeth down, in the beginning really to get that sod ripped up get some of those um you know big potholes just kind of broken up and try to fill everything in you're going to see it that didn't really work so well because the it was so muddy and so clumpy that uh, at one point i had to get out and and use a uh, a stake that got dug up in this whole process i used that to just take out all the chunks of sod and dirt and, and everything that were built up in there and so it was like i say man tough sledding is about the best way to put it and again there's not really a time of year i can get in there when it's dry which is when you want to do that because things are gonna you know just nice and evenly flow all over over the front and rear blade of the land leveler there and get that nice smooth finish that you want and so it was a little bit of adapting to the conditions there and it probably took me five six seven eight passes to really get a, a feel for what i could do with the material that was there and you know, I'm doing all this and I'm showing this. I even debated to put this out or not because this isn't an ideal use of the land leveler, um, but it's making do and I think it worked better than what a box blade would have done. You know, I got this kind of back in form, you know, and, it, and, and what needs to happen again is put that in gravel. You know, you get your base, your gravel base on top and your smaller stone up above that and really do it right. But this is going to be a good start here. We'll see how it lasts long term. Again, you can see how much gravel is down in there. So these were about as bad a conditions as you could get for a land leveler. And uh, I think the proof is in the pudding. This tool, I mean, it's, it's almost foolproof. You know, you're, there's not really any monkeying around with it. You're just going back and forth over this thing multiple times until you get the, the results that you're looking for. And so it makes it um, in a simple way fun, you know, because you're getting good results and, and you get to sit in your tractor for a while and, and kill some time. So not too bad for social distancing, you know. Hey, so if you like what you see, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button below. Make sure you check out the other videos on my channel. Also read that description. I put a lot of links in there. So helpful uh, links to different websites. You can go to my Amazon store too. Check out the accessories and attachments for your tractor, for your homestead. Head on over to goodworkstractors.com. I can get you one of these land levelers. I got all sorts of attachments there. You can put together a whole tractor and attachment package for you. Help with delivery and financing too.
And so I would start to take those big chunks of uh, that, those big clumps that started to, to, to pile up inside the land leveler and I'd move them to those low spots, to those big potholes and those divots that were there and just kind of dump them out there and back over them, back and forth, you know, several times just to kind of pack them down and then lower the leveler again and go over it. And so I did that repeatedly and probably after 10 to 15 passes of that, I raised up the and, uh, and turned over the scarifier tees so I was no longer using those. And really, at that point, what I did was um, just go over it, continue to go over it. And you can see that those blades are angled, right? And so the material is going to want to angle from one side and push from one side to the other side. And so naturally, if it was dry, it would flow a little bit more evenly that way. But you want to have that crown in the middle there. And so I was trying to um, do what I could with that wet material. It wasn't really shifting like I wanted it to. but. Everything turned out pretty good, and then in the very last couple of passes, I actually raised up that leveler about maybe an inch or so, just above the surface there. And so as I went back and forth the last couple of passes, it just kind of hit those high spots, those little high spots there, and knocked them down. So